Today, I'm going to be making this part with one setup. Before I get into the content of this video, I want to talk about why I haven't made a video in a couple of months. The, there are two reasons. One is I've been working on a project that has been taking up a lot of my time, but is not yet ready to publish as a video. The other thing is that uh, things were pretty stressful at work. I had some deadlines, did not take a vacation when I should have, and therefore my productivity in the shop and at home dropped quite a bit. I do have a video I'm working on now, which is part two of the epoxy injection mold video, so that should be out soon. At work, we have an email group for makers. We have a maker space, and one of the people on the group who actually I know asked for a recommendation of a local machine shop that could make a part for him. Uh, this is actually a commercial product, but he wanted to have a different hole spacing. It's a drilling jig. And then it was available from the commercial product. I normally like don't like to work on things that are copies of commercial products, but since uh, in this case, you know, it wasn't actually available in the variation that he needed. And I thought this would be a fun project. I said, sure, I'll make you one, one for you. But certainly I would not produce this without the permission of the manufacturer because I don't agree with that type of thing. So this is the part. Uh, I looked at it in CAD and realized that it was uh, two-sided and thought about it for a while and then realized I could use my fourth axis right there to do this in a single setup. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Here's the part that I want to make. And you can see that this needs some milling from the top, as well as hole drilling and tapping. And then we also have this feature here, which needs to be milled from the bottom, or if we're using the fourth axis, we can do it from the side. Here's the setup I'm going to use. This is the adapter plate and the vise that are attached to the fourth axis. And then I've modeled the stock here. If I hide the stock, this is the part itself, and then this is what I'm going to keep for as long as I can. So this is effectively a thick tab. If we look at the milling operations, it starts out with adaptive clearing. I mounted the stock in the vise on the rotary table, and here it's starting to rough it out. One of the things that I noticed as I was roughing it out is that it was blasting a lot of the coolant right into the camera. So I moved the camera so that it's just to the left of the door, and now it's not getting blasted with the coolant anywhere near as much as it was before. So it's a little bit easier to see what's going on, even though it's not quite as close. The adaptive pass left some extra material both on the sides of the boss as well as on the top here. And so this is taking the top off so that these are at the correct heights. And then we'll do a contour around that to clean up the sides. I then did some spot drilling so that I could drill the three different drills. I started out with a one millimeter drill, which worked okay, but it did break after the second attempt. And then the other drills are plenty large enough. And then it's time to do the adaptive to clean out the sides. An outside 2D contour to clean up the outsides and give it a really nice finish. For the next operation, I set it up so it rotates the fourth axis so that I can use side milling to rough out. But as you can see here, this was not the correct side. So I stopped it so that I wouldn't cut the wrong side. And when I went back to Fusion 360, all I had to do is go over here and check this, rotate A axis in the opposite direction. Click OK, post it, and then start over. And now rotate it in the correct direction. For 
Farther down, you can see it's now removing a chamfer. This chamfer is on the top side. Previously, what we milled was actually the bottom side, which is the part that has the paw sticking up. And then do a contour to finish it up. Next, I did several side contours, each from a different side of the part. So you'll see it doing the contour and then rotating each time. This provided the clearance that I needed for the chamfer operation, which comes next. I always enjoy watching the machine chamfer, and this is even more fun because, as you'll see shortly, once it finishes chamfering this side, it's going to rotate and chamfer the other side. And the beauty of that is you get perfect chamfers on both sides. Uh, it's automatically aligned because it was uh, machined in place, so it's chamfering exactly how it was machined. So there's never a mismatch in chamfer doing it this way. The way that I set up the parting off is first I milled quite a bit of the material off of one side, and then I milled more of the material off the other side. And you can see right about here, it's starting to lean because it uh, is thin enough. I should have finished parting off here, but then what I had it do is rotate. And then you can see here it's going to gouge a little bit of that edge and then cut it off. The part that I made and gave to Matt had a flaw. I decided to hand tap it just because I didn't feel like putting the tap into the machine. And as a result, I didn't get the tap in very straight, and when he tightened it down, the jig was actually at an angle. So it wasn't uh, completely flat. And I had been thinking about changing the strategy anyway to rotate the part 90 degrees, which I'll show you in a second. So I decided to remake it, and this time to do rigid tapping to ensure that the hole was tapped perfectly perpendicular to the part. As a reminder, this is how I had it set up for the first operation. And one of the things I realized is this was inefficient use of the material. If I rotated this 90 degrees as you see it, it would be a better use of the material. So that's what I did in this one, and it fits just fine in the material. If we go to the machining operations, there is one difference. So this is pretty much all the same, the adaptive, the clearing, the drilling. And then I rigid tapped, which would ensure that it was uh, perfectly perpendicular. And then the, the next thing that was different, if we look here at how I did the chamfer, the really large chamfer, I ro rotated the machine and then just did a adaptive uh, and then horizontal to clean it up. I also realized I could rotate it and use a small ball end mill instead of a drill to cut the slot. And this worked really well. Other than that, the other thing that I did is changed how I did the tabs so that I did this all, you know, the second part of the tabbing on one side, as you can see here, to ensure that it didn't droop before I finished cutting it through. This is mostly how it came off the machine. And I say mostly because I had it in the tumbler for about 10 minutes before I realized that the audio from the previous take had issues. So there are two things that are not perfect. One, one is that I did not have the tap go all the way through. Um, I didn't check the setting that would tell it to go through rather than bottom out uh, before the bottom of the hole. The other thing is uh, with the remnant that I was on here, because I didn't have my vise set up in the machine anymore, I thought it would be faster to use my belt sander. The problem is I did not have this perfectly perpendicular to the belt sander and so if you look here, you can see probably that it's not quite flat. Here's what it looks like after it's spent a couple hours in the tumbler. I really love this finish because I find it more durable than a machined finish or polished finish. 
it's less resistant to fingerprints. But the other thing I like about this is it gets rid of the tooling marks and all I have to do is just throw it in the tum tumbler and then come back a couple hours later. So I'm quite happy with this. So this part is not perfect. There are things I would do differently next time. In other words, the third time. The third time's the charm, right? But at least I learned a lot from it and gained more confidence in doing this type of thing with the fourth axis. So I'm actually happy with what I learned from it and how things are turned out. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, comment below if you have any suggestions or inputs or ideas of how I could have done things better, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.